welcome to our channel amazing viewers you are most welcome in today's video in this video you are going to learn a lot of things concerning understanding life in the spirit apostle arome taught extensively concerning spiritual life how you can grow your spiritual life onto the spiritual giant how to grow your spiritual life from a, as a believer how to grow your spiritual life if you have been one who have faltered in your work with god at some time and some point in your christian journey and also how you can go into deeper things in god so i wanted to watch to the end in order to understand exactly the things that are done in the spirit concerning your spiritual faith and also subscribe to our channel like the video and also share with loved ones thank you and are you there now i have a catalog of them because this is the object of my current studies this is what i've been studying in the past three weeks i wanted to know if i was a christian it was if, if 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 I could score an A in my work with God. So I, let me find out from the Bible. What does it mean to sustain a life in the spiritual? Meanwhile, now give me a scripture. Give me a scripture. Give me give me Romans chapter six verse eleven. Romans chapter six verse eleven. Still trying to justify uh, this my emphasis before we begin. Uh, the journey. He said, say, likewise, reckon ye also. Now, the word reckon is ancient English. If you are looking at that word from the perspective of current English, you are going to miss the meaning. The reckon, as used here, is an accounting register. It's an accounting word. Are you, are you with me? And those of you that did accounting, you know that it's, it's debit and credit in order for you to get the balance of your account statement. It's the summation of debits minus the summation of credits. So this is an account scripture. And you will notice that it's not the Holy Spirit that helps us to reckon. It is something that you do yourself. Are you with me? Oh, you are not with me. There are 12 bus stops on the path of spiritual progress. One of the bus stops is reckoning. And that's why I just, this is the path of spiritual pro progress, is what you have in the book of um, Romans chapter 5, chapter 6, and chapter 7. Right? So one of the points on the path of spiritual progress is your reckoning. Now, if you don't do your reckoning very well, you are going to be a believer, but you're still believing in sin. Your victory over sin begins from Reckoning. I'm going to show you what it means. Um, are you still here? Yes, now, so like I said, the meaning of reckon means account. Remove reckon. Might be difficult for you to process. It means account. And since we have introduced accounting, it means that there are two sides here. There is a debit side and there is a credit side. So first of all, let us try to find the debit side. He said, likewise, reckon ye also yourself to be dead indeed unto sin. That's the debit side. Stay with me. A woman in our ministry, her husband died. And, and I started becoming close to the husband when he died. And he died abroad, died in London. So they took her from here, took her to London to see the body and identify it before they transported his body back to Nigeria. It was very traumatic for this woman. And um, I have a gift that I've exercised a few times. <laughs> it's a gift of an exalter. So if people are sorrowful and I exercise that gift, I just find out what God is saying. I just find out. Then I begin to say it. I find out what scripture is the Holy Spirit willing to elevate and I use that scripture. I just begin to discuss it and then the Holy Spirit will enlighten me. And if I finish that, if there is a sorrowful person in the room, sorrow is likely to break. And I tried it in a burial. I used that thing and instead of at the end of the 
people began, we began to sing, we began, and we forgot that it was a barrier that we came. So I, I was somewhat confident of this gift that I had. But you know what? Concerning this woman, I tried to use the gift, and it worked. The gift was in operation, but the woman was not restored. That's what I'm saying. I failed, even though I deployed the ability that I thought I had. So I took my Bible and went home. <laughs> Two weeks later, she came to see me in the office. And she told me she was happy. Oh, so we have progress. So I wanted to find out what made her happy. See, her husband appeared to her in the dream and gave her some instructions on what to do. So I sat her down to tell her that the reason why her husband is still appearing, you and me know he's not her husband, but the reason why her husband is still appearing to her is because she has not reckoned him dead. She has not yet accounted that the man is dead. And because she has not accounted that the man is dead, something that looks like the man keeps appearing to her and taking advantage of that allowance that she has made available. And that's how sin is. If you don't reckon yourself to be dead, it means you did not close the door completely. Maybe you left the door, just left two inches because of fire. That's why, you know... <laughs> We can have, there are many intellectual reasons that we can give for not closing the door completely. It means you have refused to account that you are dead to sin. In your not accounting, you have created a latitude for sin. So when sin comes, because sin is very intelligent, I don't have time to take you to Romans chapter 7. That's where we, we can do the anatomy of sin. You will see the 14 characteristics of sin. Sin can deceive, sin can kill. Sin. That means sin is a persuasive talker. Its influence can bend the wisdom of your mind. Oh, sin can make your mind go to places it should not go. And the reason why it has such power is because you have not reckoned yourself dead to sin. It means that in your the ledger of your Christian experience, you have not debited sin. You need to, please help me preach your neighbor, you need to debit this thing. You need to debit. Because let me tell you, in case you, have, you don't know, sin will follow you to old age. Oh! I finished preaching in London. Fire! Fire! People were hit. All kinds of deliverances took place. I saw, oh! And I was excited. And they brought me back to the hotel. You know, you know how our protocol people, when they are coming to take you from the hotel, we are, we are going as if <laughs> so the white guys will be looking at it is this the, one of the princes from Africa <laughs> and the kind of vehicles they bring Jesus a lady a white lady have been looking at me since we will go and come back Go, come back. Uh -uh. We were coming back after that healing service. And she just ran and entered into the lift with me and told me that how many degrees she has, that she has two months. School here, school in Oxford, school here. And the only time we had was from ground floor to fourth floor. I, I knew all her degrees, everything. And then she now looked at me and said, she also has a very special competence, which is to deal with stress. And she analyzed me. And she can tell that I'm stressed. She now touched me here like this. And said, the reason why this place is hard, she called the name. It's an accumulation. Of, ah. At that point, if, if you didn't dare beat that matter. And unfortunately for me, we were going to the fourth floor. We were, ah. Sin will follow you. Sin, it will follow you. As you and that lady are in the third, uh, fourth floor, it will come and that is just a step away. It's just a step you can. Ah. Hey. 
if you have not reckoned yourself completely dead unto it, you will consider that it is possible. As long as you can find a place in your mind, you can find a place in your life. When Jesus was talking about sin, he attacked the ones that come into the mind. He attacked it grievously. Because if he doesn't have a place there, if you, if you reckon it dead there, it will never happen. Did you get that? Yes, Let's go back to that scripture. We are still, I'm just trying to lay the foundation for the journey, okay? He said, he said likewise, reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed to sin, that's debit, and alive unto God through Jesus Christ, that's credit. So this is the aspect of life that is no longer associated with your new existence in sin. So that you can be alive unto God. That's what Elijah meant when he said, as the Lord liveth before whom I stand. He was alive unto God. Your life in the spirit will expose you to diverse experiences and we believers are supposed to understand the experiences that will befall us just because of our adventure in the holy ghost is that clear number one the first the first experience that is going to be consequent upon our life in the spirit is a consciousness of spiritual reality the consciousness of spiritual reality. I don't know if I can do First Corinthians chapter 2. Because if there is any set of scriptures that we can label or a chapter in the Bible that we can label spiritual things or spiritual realities. First Corinthians chapter 2. But it's too long. For me to use First Corinthians 2 to establish that it's just too long. But there is no other scripture that does it as powerfully as First Corinthians chapter 2. Okay, so let's try to see First Corinthians 2. Okay, let's start from verse 9 so that I will not take too much time in the reading. But as it is written, I have not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that love him. Stop. Stop there. When we say eyes have not seen, we say ears have not heard. We say it has not entered into the heart of man. What, what are those things? Things that eyes have not seen, things that ears have not heard, and things that have not occurred in the heart of man. What, what are those things? They are such things. Those things are mysteries because your mind has not thought on it, because your senses cannot verify their existence. They are beyond the scope of touch, beyond the scope of thought. Those are mysteries. Mysteries are realities that are held in custody by a spirit being. The reality is authentic. The reality is legitimate, but it is held in custody by a spirit being. Okay, let me ask this congregation. What is a spiritual thing? Yes, bro, you that brought me today. Take the mic, give it to anybody to answer. What is a spiritual thing? You know, when you take, take time to think on this, my question, you realize it's not an intellectual question. I know we have intellects in this room. But unfortunately, that question is not intellectual. So many of you have, have reached back into your mind to 
make sense. No, it's not cerebral. It's not cerebral. Yeah. Something that we can't we can't see, we can't perceive with our senses. You got forty percent. It is true that we cannot see it. It is true that our senses cannot verify its existence. But that's not the major issue about the definition of a spiritual thing. Yes? So a spiritual thing comes from, what comes to my mind is spirit, the attributes of a spirit. So the, what are the attributes of a spirit? It's not necessarily the attributes of a spirit that is a spiritual thing. Okay. A spiritual person mm. has attributes, and you can know a spiritual person through his attributes. But what is a spiritual thing? A spiritual thing is not necessarily a person. Like I said, it's not it's not cerebral. Because this 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 man is saying that eyes have not seen. That ears have not heard, it has not entered into the heart of man, the things. So the things that eyes have not seen that he's talking about, that ears have not heard, they are things. So what are those kind of things? A spiritual thing is something that is beyond the realm of the physical existence. That's 40%. <laughs> the, you see, all of your definitions have, has not acknowledged the source of the thing. So you have not answered the question. I'm trying to take your mind somewhere because I said that our life in the spirit will expose us to experiences. Some of you have prayed. And why do you pray? Why do you pray? You start feeling something on your head. How many of you? That's an experience. But you don't know the meaning because you don't understand that we are actually living in the spirit. You don't know the meaning and you have not cared to know. It's because the subject of understanding life in the spirit has not become a very strong subject on your life. Meanwhile, that's where we live from. The resources of the Holy Spirit. That's where we live from. That's what makes you have the ability to do something on your job that, that people that were trained for the job cannot do. If you understand the things of the spirit, you'll be able to do natural things supernaturally. And you'll be able to do supernatural things naturally. That's what it means when the Bible says we'll mount up with wings like eagles. So we'll do the supernatural things, we'll do it like the eagle naturally. A spiritual, yeah, finally. Um, these are realities that have existed before time. Realities that have existed before time. Yes. But because of the limitations that come with the human spirit, so it is... No, 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 you are, you are wrong. You even got like 5%. <laughs> the fact that the things are ancient doesn't make them spiritual things. Listen carefully to me. A spiritual thing is a reality that is formed by the presence of a spirit being. You see, when my brother was worshipping, are you there? Yes, sir. A reality started forming. And that reality was so tangible that it could give us experiences, even though it was not something that we could see. The reality was so tangible. There was a sister behind me. I don't know whether she was crying. But the reality was so tangible that it made somebody cry. But her physical senses cannot verify that reality. Something began to form here. And the moment he stopped doing what he was doing, that pleased the spirit being, that made him to begin to form that reality. The moment he stopped it, that spiritual thing, he vanished from our consciousness. It's not as if the thing ceased to exist, but we're no longer conscious of it. He was no longer willing, he was no longer willing to make us conscious of it because the activity that made him willing has stopped. 
Are you staying with me? You know, the first thing I said is that when we begin our adventure in the spirit realm, the first thing that happens to us is that a consciousness of spiritual realities is formed. A consciousness. And this consciousness of spiritual reality that is formed, even a believer and an unbeliever can verify that it's present. The last meeting I preached on, or preached in, in Tanzania, the governor of that province came for the meeting, and he's not a Christian. So he was given an opportunity to make a speech. He made a brilliant speech, and I told him his speech was indeed brilliant. He, he spoke about the population of the province, spoke about the economic potential, spoke about the things that were underway. Oh, my God. In like 30 minutes, you will know that the guy knows governance. So he now said, well, he's not a Christian. He's been looking for people to educate about his function since he was appointed as governor of the province. He, he looked for them. He didn't, he didn't know that they were in the church. So now that he has seen them, he wants to, he wants to engage. <laughs> so his engagement was enlightening. He now said he wanted to, he will sit for a while and go. So they invited me to preach. Then his spiritual thing. <laughs> his spiritual thing began to form. He now told the pastor, okay, I've extended it. It's, it's now one hour. He stayed with us till we left and went to the airport. Something was formed. He could not ignore the thing. But he, he couldn't deny the experience. So in our journeys in the spirit, we're exposed to experiences. And the first thing that the Holy Spirit does to us is that he begins to give us a consciousness of spiritual realities. Oh my God. Oh my God. You know my golden scripture. I don't normally quote it here. John chapter 3, verse 3. Jesus was responding to Nicodemus and Jesus said, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. That was the closest that Jesus went to defining what it meant to be born again. And instead of a definition, Jesus gave an experience. Because if Jesus had given a definition, a cerebral man would have identified with the definition. Because he knows it cerebrally. Jesus rather gave an experience. He says the organic experience of being born again is that, meanwhile, the word used there, as I will always say, in the Greek is idol. You can check it out. Idol means to perceive by reason of senses. So what Jesus was saying was, the same way you were in your mother's womb at nine months, and you had eyes in the womb. You had ears in the womb, but the, your eyes were not meant for the womb. Your ears were not meant for the womb. You were born before your eyes became functional. You were born before your ears became functional. That's the same way spiritual senses have been built into your spirit. But you need to be born again before they become operational. And the proof that you are born again, according to Jesus, is that you can now perceive the realm that your senses cannot perceive. The realm of God. So the first thing that God does when you begin your journeys in the spirit is that he begins to give you a consciousness of the realm that you're interacting with. A consciousness. A consciousness. A consciousness. Do you know that what you do with that consciousness will determine if you grow in that consciousness or not? The moment you have a consciousness, you can no longer say you are ignorant. Because if you, if you sin, you will know. Because the consciousness will teach you that this is not my way. 
The consciousness becomes the foundation of your enlightenment. You will discover that 70% of the communication of God is in consciousness. It's, it's not in words. It's in consciousness. Consciousness. Because that's the first thing he wants you to be able to handle. Consciousness. A consciousness of spiritual realities. The moment that happens, you are now responsible for your actions. If I lose the anointing on my head, it's because of me. I played with the consciousness because the consciousness will warn you. It will warn you. It will warn. As you are, you are migrating to that guy's house, the consciousness will be troubling. In fact, I'm, I wonder how you made it. You become a life thing. Nobody can, you know, normally when things happen and we are coming to give reports to the pastor, maybe something has gone wrong, everybody tries to paint himself in bad light. They are all liars. They all knew because of this, this consciousness. They all knew. They all knew. They all knew. You preach a sermon and you preach what God is saying. His joy will be so strong that you will feel it. He begins to give you little, little experiences that are obtainable in the realm of God so that you can become alive to God. Remember, the credit side. We are dead indeed to sin. We are alive to God. So the consciousness comes. So that's the first level. It's a level of consciousness. So you can handle a spiritual thing without seeing it because of this consciousness. 